Is sex addiction real? Wood says he's been in sex addiction treatment for... Sex rehab. Uh, we all make mistakes. We always hear about it when some celebrity gets caught doing something they're not supposed to. Then they come out and say, I'm so sorry, I'm seeking recovery from sex addiction. Yeah, sure you are. Finding the answer to that question actually brings me back to my hometown of Scalding Phoenix, Arizona. More specifically, so I could pose the question to Floyd Godfrey, who is a certified sex addiction therapist, and actually one of the guys who's helped me in my journey of sex addiction recovery. So Floyd, is sex addiction real? Absolutely. Sex addiction is a real phenomenon. Does everyone who acts out sexually have an addiction? I don't think so. I think it's one thing for someone to feel compulsive sexually, or they have a strong libido, and they're having a hard time managing their sexual urges. Uh, it's something very different for someone to come in and describe that their life is out of control, they can't stop. I can feel my heart Nothing else just matters. pounding in my chest. Why can I not stop? Shortness of All breath. All I need to do right now is look at porn. Earlier this year, the World Health Organization officially recognized compulsive sexual behavior as a disorder. They define it as a persistent pattern of failure to control intense, repetitive sexual impulses or urges resulting in repetitive sexual behavior. So what kind of sexual behavior is considered addiction? We asked the man who wrote the book, Robert Weiss. So some of what you've seen on television with some of the more major figures who've used their authority to force people into sex, that's really not what I would consider sex addiction. That's much more of an offending pattern. Sex addiction is more like hooking up with prostitutes all the time, having porn all the time, multiple affairs, consensual behavior that is problematic within a, a day-to-day life, but isn't, doesn't rise to the level of a legal or physical violation of somebody. The very nature of sex addiction being super shameful to talk about is what brought me back to Arizona in the peak of summer. I knew that my best bet to hear someone's story on this topic was to connect with old friends who have already been through this journey with me. It's a very real thing and it's definitely more of a common thing than either people realize or people want to realize. The interesting thing about sex addicts too is it's usually not about sex. Sex is the symptom. The pornography use, the prostitutes, the strip clubs, these are all symptoms of things going on underneath. You know, I was exposed to pornography pretty early in my life, around like 10 years old. Where it became more of a, a, a problem for me is when I, I use it as a way to to escape and hide from the problems that were going on at my household. For those people who have a sexual problem, porn is, for lack of a better word, a gateway. For a sex addict, the porn is often not an endpoint, but it's the beginning of a whole cascade of behaviors that's going to lead them into problems. The last like couple of years or so is when my addiction turned more to actually sleeping around instead of pornography. And they're using the sexual behavior as a way of coping, but it's across the board, male and female. Say, oh, well, this is a guy thing, right? I mean, guys are always having sexual issues and guys are always fooling around and, well, not so much. About 30% of the people I treat are women. So around 9, 10, um, I was introduced to pornography from a neighborhood friend and I kind of had a, the initial, like, disgust feel, like, oh, that was, I shouldn't have done that. Um, but very quickly, I desired it right away. It was almost immediately. I never heard of like a woman or a girl struggling with that. It just felt that it was a very much a boy or a man issue. And I carried it alone for 10 years, minimum, before I ever shared it with anyone. And I think that just continued the shame cycle very intensely for me. In this way, sex addiction is like other addictions. The cycle addicts find themselves in has the same components. An addiction cycle usually starts with some sense of pain or shame. The pressure of that builds until your brain moves into a state of preoccupation. And the preoccupation is when sexual thoughts start coming up. I need some kind of release and I need some sort of outlet to this weight of shame and frustration. That then finally your brain moves into what we would call a ritual, which is uh, sort of the behavior that catapults you into the acting out. You get kind of like a guttural feeling, you know, your heart rate speeds up which then moves them into the acting out, whether it's pornography or compulsive masturbation or prostitutes or whatever it is. I could check out and numb myself and be done. And then from there, after that, it's just shame all over again. So it's this, it's this complete circle. 
the primary motivator for many, many people to seek treatment of all kinds for all addictions has to do with the fear of a loss of a relationship. I didn't really come to terms with just how damaging it can be until I was found out, essentially. The girl I was engaged to be married to in a couple months from when I was found out, just engagement ended. I was just completely defeated, like my life is over, and seeing just how hurt she was and how hurt like, her family and friends around her were really put it in the context of this isn't just about me. I had never told anyone that this was something that was a part of my life. So that's probably the biggest and probably the scariest step for most addicts. Tell somebody, ask for help, find a counselor, start to get into some uh, basics, understanding what's going on. A key part of being in recovery is actually talking about my addiction with others. Sort of like what I'm doing right now. So when Greg opened up to one of his friends, it was a big deal. It was super scary and with no hesitation, his response was, yeah, dude, me too. I'm actually in therapy for it right now. That just totally like shifted my entire view of the situation. Recovery is not the same thing as sobriety. We always hoped that somebody would get sober and so they stop acting out. It's ruining their lives. But the, the first priority of our treatment is to help them learn what recovery is. I put myself in a place of constantly sharing so that I can not allow shame to come in. Every time I've shared my story, I usually hear quite a few women who go, oh, I actually didn't come here for that reason, but I struggle with that too. That's where that vulnerability and openness and having that connection really kind of just stops any type of acting out or any of that addiction in its tracks. Which then if people are in recovery over time, the sobriety follows. To me, the point of sex in a healthy relationship is to feel connected with the other person, to have this oneness, this sameness, and that's completely the opposite of how my life was a couple of years before. It, it gives you this sense of pride of I was able to identify an issue that I had and I'm actually working towards getting it resolved in a healthy way. That's huge.